Hollywood Reporter came out. Boris Kid today said WB is officially developing a sequel to The Man of Steel. And it's going to have Henry Cavill and the producer of Man of Steel, Charles Roven, is producing it. And they are looking for writers right now and a director. So, okay, I so mean, boom. <laughs> that's huge. And before we get into what I'm hoping you want to see in Man of Steel 2, how do you think this finally came about? Is the timing on this exactly what they wanted right before Black Adam comes out? Did they want yeah. the hype going into it to even push Black Adam a little more, you think? Yeah, I mean, the timing for this to be released seems like, hey, WB said, run this story. Um, because I think Black Adam needs a little bit of hype. And, yeah, I think I think they want to get some momentum going. There's been such a push for Henry Cavill. I mean, he has such a huge push, push, not only for Superman to come back, but Henry Cavill and for dc finally to get something going and it does seem like we have the rock to thank for most of this was so, all of this done before comic-con you think it doesn't sound like it it sounds to me like you know it it sounds to me like the deals were were moving and just they didn't have it in place yet. I think The Rock, if I have a suspicion, I think The Rock and his agent kind of leaked that, that they were hoping Henry Cavill would be there in order for the studio to kind of say, hey, okay, let's make a deal. But they probably weren't able to make a deal in time, and then that didn't happen. That's what I suspect. Okay. So I'm trying to get my head, because everything's done business-wise. And I I know you've heard the interviews from um, Dwayne Johnson about he hasn't actually said Henry Cavill, but he says he's not the strongest man in the universe, and it's about time he gets back into the game or whatever he says. Right. But he also said something very interesting that they got a new regime into DC that allowed these things to happen way more than the old regime. Yeah. If he has I mean, been talking for years with the old regime, how, I mean, he's got to be one of the happiest guys that a new one finally came in. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, it's like they wanted to kind of vilify Toby Emmerich and Walter Hamada. And turns out they were right. You know, I'm not going to get into all the Ray Fisher garbage with Hamada, but Hamada's ideas for what he wanted to do with the DC universe absolutely sucked. So here you have everyone, whether you like BVS or Man of Steel, those people who don't like Snyder, it's like everyone agreed Henry Cavill was an amazing Superman. Why you wouldn't want him to come back, especially after he got super hot with the Witcher, is like just ridiculous. So, yeah. I mean, here it is. Rock stated it, and in this article kind of proves it that he had been going to that regime, the old regime, for years to say, Henry Cavill, Superman, let's do this. And they were saying, no. If their big idea was to kill Cavill off screen in The Flash and have Supergirl and Batman, or Batgirl, be the new Superman and Batman going forward for the DC Universe. Huh? What do you think, what do you think Dwayne Johnson thought about that when he was hearing that idea? Uh, knowing the rock, he thought that was the biggest joke he's ever heard. And, uh, whatever you think of the rock, whether he's a hype guy or whatever, he's not that great of an actor. He's, he is really a DC fan. I mean, he really, he legitimately is, uh, yeah. especially Superman. Uh, you know, that's his guy. And I mean, he said it in the recent interview. He's like, hey, basically, this is the whole goal. I mean, he wants to introduce Black Adam, obviously, and hi him be a part of it. But it's like, we want Superman back in a big way. Let's go jump into this a little bit. It's oop, it's on um, comic book movie. I, that's where I saw this first really out in the public. Is that who you saw it first from? Yeah, that's where I saw it. I mean, if you want to go to the like the Hollywood reporters who who's reporting it, and then a lot of these great, better known websites are are reporting it on it also. So, yeah, I mean, 
So how big of a deal is it that we're getting both James Gunn and Matt Reeves being said that they're working on projects? Yeah, it's all pretty big. And and I guess you could say one concerning thing in the article is since they haven't officially named the Kevin Feige of the DCU yet, Mm -hmm. that a lot of these big name guys like The Rock, Matt Reeves, James Gunn, and maybe even a little bit of J.J. Abrams still are, are buying real estate. You know, they're buying D.C. real estate and trying to stake their flag on certain areas. Okay. And so, but I feel like that article sort of wanted to paint a picture that they're not that organized when in a sense I know Zaslov and this Mike DeLuca who is – uh, the head of the whole pitcher scheme, but ha- is probably just going to end up the DC head, which isn't a bad thing because he's a DC fan. Uh, so he can probably do it. In fact, he was uh, producing Suicide Squad 2 before James Gunn came in and took it over. Uh, he had a whole nother storyline where the Suicide Squad was going after Black Adam. But anyway, um, you know, so I think this is a really great thing because you can have the rock doing his black Adam JSA stuff. That's going to cross pollinate with Henry Cavill, Superman. And then you can have James Gunn over here doing his, his wacky stuff. That's still DC. There's still the DCEU. I love suicide squad. I like James. I like James Gunn a lot. I love peacemaker. Uh, you know, it's weird if my wife loves it, that, that says something because you're grabbing that, you know, regular audience type person. The one thing that was so great about it is that you could just sit and watch it and have fun. There was no like backstories that you had to understand. You didn't even really care. You just, this is funny right from the beginning. I mean, it was, it was good. And the fun, and what I like about James Gunn is. Um, if you remember the new Lone Ranger movie with Johnny Depp and then the uh, Green Hornet movie with Seth Rogen, it's like, wow, they took those character lead characters and they were bumbling fools the whole movie. They didn't have any skills, whereas like Star-Lord and Peacemaker are kind of idiots, but they're capable. Yeah. You know, they still kick kick ass they can still do their job it's just they're kind of kind of neanderthals too at the same time so i like how he balances like hey it's funny but we're also going to have capable action and they're going to be cool at the same time 